Bang. That's how it all started, around 13.8 billion years ago, and was figured out over the past 100 years. Everything we see in space today – planets, asteroids, comets, stars – it wasn't there at the beginning. In the 1920s, astronomers came up with the idea of how a long, long time ago, the universe was just a single point – an extremely hot, like trillions of degrees hot, compact, dense point that stretched and expanded unimaginably fast. Matter that started flying in all directions at the speed of light at one particular moment. The Big Bang was complete chaos, with teeny tiny particles that were mixed with energy and light. Yes, a total mess, but still, in the first minute after the Big Bang, the base for everything that would later appear was almost finished. It was hot only during this huge blast. As soon as the expansion started, the universe began to cool down, similar to when gas cools when you spray it from an aerosol can. During that process, part of the energy kind of froze out, just like the water freezes into ice. Here, pure energy got frozen and solidified into matter. One minute after the bang, the cooling thing was still going on, extremely fast and literally everywhere at once, since the universe really doesn't have edges. It wasn't just a compact dot anymore. The base for further expansion and all that's coming was being formed. Remember those tiny particles from that first boom stage of the universe? They started grouping together, which formed atoms of helium and hydrogen. It took about three minutes for most of the helium and all of the hydrogen in space to be made. These two are the most common elements and the basic materials that later form the first galaxies and stars. Just because the base wasn't finished doesn't mean the creation of the universe stopped after those first couple of minutes. True, after that, no new elements were created for millions of years, which is why the initial version of the universe was entirely helium, hydrogen, and energy. But eventually, atoms began to slowly group together, which, after lots and lots of time, caused the creation of galaxies and stars. Clouds of helium and hydrogen grouped and turned into stars that had gravitational forces. Our Sun is also made of three-quarters hydrogen, while the rest is helium. Uh, one quarter? Yeah. At later stages, some other, heavier elements started to show up too, such as carbon, iron, oxygen, and so on. It wasn't all about chemical processes where new elements, stars, or planets kept coming. The whole universe has been expanding ever since the Big Bang. Researchers realize other galaxies are kind of moving away from ours. Hmm, guys, you need to stop doing that. How will we discover alien life out there if you keep running away all the time? And not just that. The farthest galaxies are actually moving quicker than the ones closer to our galaxy, the Milky Way. The universe is fabulous, unknown, mysterious, scary, and completely silent. Imagine yourself floating in your spacesuit somewhere above Earth. All you can actually hear is the sound of your own breathing. Nothing from out there. Since there's no atmosphere, sound doesn't have a way to travel or be heard. Speaking of spacesuit, that thing costs around $12 million. I guess that means we'll have to wait up a little bit more to try that whole chilling in space thing. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, so you might think it's the hottest one too. And yet, Venus actually takes the title of the hottest planet in our solar system, with the surface baked by a temperature of 840 degrees Fahrenheit. Fair enough. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, which is in charge of regulating temperature, so it loses the race for the title of the hottie of the solar system. Venus also has pretty long days. Just one takes around 243 Earth days. Now that comes in handy for those people with pretty long to-do lists who like to take it easy and slow. However, Venus orbits the Sun in 225 Earth days, which means one year there lasts 18 days less than a Venus day. Hmm, you can have two birthdays in one day then? Well, two birthdays in a day could be one of the good sides, but the downside is that on Venus, it rains sulfuric acid and snows metal. Eh, not so fun anymore, huh? The Earth is cool itself. Being 4.5 billion years old and the only known planet that supports life, it also has more trees than there are stars in the Milky Way. 3 trillion, while there are only 100 to 400 billion stars. 
We may have counted trees, but still, so little do we know about our ocean. Only 5% of it is explored, so we know less about it than about Mars or the Moon, whose surfaces have been fully mapped. It's funny how outer space is just 62 miles away from us, counting from above sea level on our planet. Seems so close, I sometimes go that distance just to have my breakfast. And yet, only 5% of the universe is visible from Earth. 68% of it is dark energy, while 27% is dark matter, which we can't see with a telescope. So close, yet so far. We will always see the same side of the Moon no matter where we are on Earth. The Moon rotates on its axis at the same speed it orbits the Earth. This is called synchronous rotation. Sunsets on Mars are blue. That happens because the fine dust on the red planet has the size perfect for blue light to efficiently penetrate the atmosphere of Mars. So the blue light scatters, after which it stays closer to the direction the sun goes, unlike the light of other colors. The universe is full of wonders, and one of them is a planet made of diamonds. Yay! It's twice bigger than the Earth, and scientists believe it's mostly covered in diamond and graphite. Now to get there, you might probably need that $12 million spacesuit, together with a really expensive ship. But if, and that's the key word here, you manage to go there and back, you may even easily pay it off. Scientists also have some predictions as to the end of everything. Oh boy, ready for this? At its early stages, the whole universe was dense and compact, so it was really, really thick. But after around 400,000 years, it kept expanding, which made it more transparent. All of this encouraged releasing light we know today as the cosmic microwave background, or CMB. It's like if you turn your TV on an empty channel and switch off the cable, you'll see the static black and white dots moving on your screen. There's something like the CMB, and also an afterglow of all that energy that was released during the Big Bang. CMB is still here. Astronomers can see it through the microwave telescope. Expanding never actually stopped. The universe is still spreading every second at an unbelievable speed, causing all the objects in space to move away from each other all the time. How repelling! We know it because the Sun from other galaxies appears redder than it's supposed to be. This is called redshift, and it happens when the source of light moves further from the one who's observing it. Then there's gravity. It attracts all objects in the universe to each other, which is the reason why planets keep orbiting the Sun or why our solar system orbits the center of the Milky Way. It's why we stay on the ground, while in space we'd float since there's no gravity up there. Having all this in mind, scientists got the idea that one day, the universe will simply take the opposite direction and start shrinking back, which will be known as the Big Crunch. Whether this really happens depends on the type of our universe. If it's open, it'll keep expanding and nothing will ever stop it. But over time, as it's stretching, the density will become so low, galaxies won't be able to form new stars, and the existing ones will fade away. When space loses all the light and heat, life won't be possible. The universe will just remain as a cold beyond, which will keep spreading thinly into endless darkness. Mm. And then, big crunch or not, bang! It all disappears! Hey, good thing we have billions of years ahead of us, huh? Well, maybe you. I won't be around then. <laughs> I'm going to retire.